Oh, oh. shit! Congratulations, Green Bay! Congratulations, Green Bay! I said run the ball. I said run the ball. I said run the ball. Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great weekend. I know it sucks watching football with the Cowboys being out of it and being pissed off. And Cowboy fans, they are pissed. We are all pissed. We want to see our team out there getting ready for an NFC championship and for a Super Bowl. And I know a lot of Cowboy fans have checked out that they are no longer watching football and don't care because the Cowboys just suck, our quarterback just sucks, we our, our coaching just sucks, that we just suck. That's the bottom line. We stink. But if you actually watch the games, if you actually watch the games and see what the difference is, between the Cowboys versus these other teams, it would be completely evident that the two things that I have talked about for years that are the problem, that we hide until it matters, running the football and stopping the run. You have to go through, because I know everybody says that, man, Jordan Love is such a better quarterback than Dak Prescott, and Brock Purdy is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. I'm not going to go actually say that. You can call me crazy or not, but those two guys did not exactly have great games. Now, it was raining, it was playoff football, and so on. Those things happen. But what you see about Brock Purdy, and sorry, Jason, Jason gets pissed off, this 49er fan, these arrogant, you know, bang, bang, Niner fans, that the drop of the hat that you say something about their guy, you're going to fire off an email and talk shit about me and how I'm just crazy. But let's be honest. Yes, Brock Purdy had a couple of passes down the field. That drive that took the lead, great drive. Great drive. But for the most part, that game was not good for Brock Purdy. It was literally Brock Purdy throwing outs, two-yard outs here or two-yard out there, and looking for his guys to make plays. You don't look at that Brock Purdy and say, he's Peyton Manning. And Jason, if you believe that, then you are a bigger fool than I thought. Because he's not. He's got a great system, but you see without Debo out there, that is a different team. Be that as it may. Be that as it may. You guys did what they needed to do to win. Congratulations going to the NFC Championship game. But what you understand that you saw with the Ravens, you saw with Green Bay, and you saw with San Francisco is they were able to run the football and be balanced. And see, what people don't seem to understand is, is this. When you can run the football, when you can have a balanced attack, you can use what is called play action. Now, I know some of you guys out there don't understand the concept of what play action is. Play action is you are faking the run, but you're actually passing the football. And this is where when you have a bellwether back who has been eating and chewing up yards like Christian McCaffrey was yesterday, you can fake that you're handing the ball to him you can do a bootleg, which gets your quarterback outside of the pocket, which slows down the rush. And generally speaking, it's going to put the cornerbacks on an island. Do I come up to get the quarterback if he's a running quarterback? Or do I stick with the receiver? And neither option is a good option. If you come up to the quarterback, he's just going to drop it right there for an easy pass and completion to his tight end or his wide receiver or his running back. If you don't, he's going to run for 8, 10, 12 yards. In order to do play action, you got to have a threat of a running game. And unfortunately, as we go through and say, Dak Prescott just sucks. I know the haters out there are just going to say you're going to make excuses. But listen, 
In the last three playoff losses for the Cowboys, your leading running back, this was actually, Tony Pollard actually had the best game rushing for the Cowboys in the last three losses. He had 56 yards for a 3.7 yard per carry. Did you feel like we actually had a running game at all in that game? We didn't. 3.7 yards, it's nothing. San Francisco last year, Tony Pollard goes out, the one-two punch. And everybody that says, bring Zeke back. Zeke had 10 carries for 26 yards. 2.6 yards per average. The year before, Zeke was our leading rusher. 12 carries, 31 yards, 2.7 yards a carry. Guys, playoff football, things get tight. Playoff football, you've got to be able to run the football. When you are one-dimensional because you are passing, teams are putting nickel coverage out there. They're putting extra defensive backs because they don't have a fear of the run. And nobody feared the Cowboys run all season long. Second problem, when you have a soft underbelly like the Cowboys at linebacker, teams can run the football on you. See, what you have to understand is defenses are designed not for the defensive linemen to make the tackles. Very rarely do you see a defensive lineman with more than 30 or 40 tackles in a season. But typically you see really good linebackers have 100, or in the case of Bobby Wagner, 150 plus. Because the job of the defensive line, the defensive front, is to occupy space, to control their gaps. This is my gap. There are many like them, but this one is mine. The linebacker's job is to scrape and fill. If the defensive line does their job and the nose tackle can occupy space in double teams, it keeps the guards from going off on the linebackers. The linebackers will have certain gaps that they're supposed to control. But ultimately, the defense is designed for the linebackers to make the play. Unfortunately... The Cowboys have not been fortunate with linebackers. These are the linebackers that the Dallas Cowboys have gotten, okay, that have gotten since 2016. We drafted Jalen Smith, who had a catastrophic knee injury that was so bad that created drop foot, which means that it had neuropathy so that the foot literally would go limp. He had to wear a brace to help basically pull that up. He had a good year. He has the instincts, but when he had to plant and, and go or deliver a blow, couldn't do it. Typically, Jalen Smith would hit a guy and hold on and go for a ride. Just did 2018, Chris Covington, who's not on the team any longer. And in 2018, I wanted to get a guy who was a free agent in Demario Davis. Demario is the type of linebacker that you want. Demario Davis is the type of linebacker who can play downhill, and when he hits you, you're not getting extra yardage. You're going backwards. He's got instincts. He's got team leadership. He's a heart and soul of that defense. And mind you, in the time in 2018 when we drafted Leighton Van Der Esch, he has um, had 110 tackles plus every year and hasn't missed a game. You have a guy like that, you're going to play a lot better. Jabril Cox got injured, tore his knee, never mounted to really much. 
Micah Parsons is now a defensive end. We drafted Damone Clark, who had a fused vertebrae uh, in college. Another scratch and dent discounted guy. And then we had Devin Harper, who seemed to have some promise, but they decided to put him on waivers, even though we didn't have any linebackers. I will also add that we ended up signing an Anthony Barr, a guy, another guy who, uh, in training camp, coming off an ACL. And then, of course, this year, we had Overshone, who um, messed up his knee, another undersized linebacker. There's not a single guy on there that you look as a true middle linebacker other than Leighton Van Der Esch. But Leighton Van Der Esch, again, out of college, had the neck injury. We have to get away from drafting guys that have these issues. We don't have any stability at linebacker. You can be mad at Micah Parsons for not being able to get to the quarterback and being able to stop the run, who's an undersized defensive end, who's dynamic. But if you don't have a complete defense, you can see what Fred Warner and crew were doing there for San Francisco. Those guys are difference makers. You can see what an Aaron Jones does for that offense and makes Jordan Love that much more effective. And it doesn't matter if you got Bill Belichick in here. It doesn't matter if you got any of these different coaches here, a Jim Harbaugh. If you do not address not having a running game and not having linebackers, you're not going to win. You'll be able to beat with skill and speed and everything else, the lesser teams will be in the same position we are. Dak is good enough. Dak did not play any worse than those guys yesterday on the field in San Francisco. Did not. The difference being is their defense didn't give up 41. Their defense did not give up 41. Their defenses were respectable against the run. And on the flip side, they had running games. Somebody had posted that if you put Dak Prescott on the San Francisco 49ers, they would have won quite a few Super Bowls. And I tend to actually agree with that. So you can call me a Dak defender or not a Cowboy fan, whatever. I don't care. But you've got to face reality of these things. The team was overrated with what we had with the, traumatic, with the uh, tragic flaws that we had. We could not stop the run, and we could not run the football. And you can take any one of the Dallas Cowboys' great teams with the great quarterbacks they had, Troy Aikman, take away Emmett Smith, take away that defense that could stop runs. Are you going to tell me that they're still winning those Super Bowls, those three? I don't think they are. Take away the Dallas Cowboys doomsday defense from Roger Staubach. Take away Tony Dorsett. And what you have left is right now's Dallas Cowboys with a much better offensive line. So be mad about us being out of the playoffs. Be mad that we're not in the Super Bowl. But we have to face reality. Here are the things that we must do. And you're not going to be able to do all this through the draft. You just can't. And until the Cowboys, Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and Will McClay get it in their skull that we have to get more bodies in here that are blue chippers, you're going to have the same results. <sighs> Let's listen in to the trash talking that is the talking heads. And the reason why I do these shows is we need to remember, we need to be reminded of our failures so that way we do something different. My, my message would be this. Uh, we, we, we have established a, a, you know, a championship program. It's just not the world championship yet. Uh, we know how to win. Uh, we know how to train to win. We have the, we have the right people. Um, but we have not crossed the threshold winning playoff games. And... Um, and it's extremely disappointing to be sitting here talking about it. But, you know, I, I know how to win. 
and and uh, we will get over that threshold. I came to Dallas to win the world championship, and that's why I'm standing here and um, buying. Does anybody else remember Lefty Giselle? Don't tell me I don't know how to coach. Into us. So he said that yesterday during the second hour of First Take. I happened to be in a commercial of my radio show at the moment, so I said, I wonder what Stephen A. Smith has to say in reaction to Mike McCarthy's comments, and I'm glad I checked it out. In case you missed it, here was Steve. What? What? This is not funny. That man just sat in front of a microphone, national, national cameras for national television rolling, and said, we have a championship program. That's what he said. Excuse me, correct me if I'm wrong, did I miss something that championships are won without winning playoff games? That is the most asinine quote that I have heard in recent memory. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, okay, where to begin? What did you, you think, D. Wood? Look, Let's not let's not react to Stephen A. He's got his opinion, and he is he is the great Stephen A. Smith. Let's react to the decision first and foremost, because I haven't talked to you since Monday, and I know where you stood on Monday. Why do you think of the decision by Jerry Jones to bring back Mike McCarthy? You know, Greeny, I'm actually glad that I'm, I'm here on, today on Friday. Usually, yeah. I'm I'm normally not here, and sometimes you need to. Hmm. When you have these type of things happen so fast, you're emotional. I felt emotional when I when I initially said what I said. But damn it, I feel the same way. Okay? I feel the same way because I'm looking at Mike McCarthy, okay, in his tenure. Okay, four years, three straight years. He's had what, 12, what, 12 wins? 12 wins. 12 wins. That's great. Congratulations. 12 wins in the regular season. But we know when it comes to the star. It's not about the regular season. It's about postseason. It's about championships. Jerry Jones has sat on his radio show uh, many a times talking about time is running out for him. Time is running out. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to see something, some results, a championship. How is bringing Mike McCarthy getting you closer to a championship right now? Explain that to me, okay? You had Dak having an MVP-type season. You've had a plethora of all pros littered all across this roster. CeeDee Lamb could possibly be the offensive player of the year. And you get bounced out in the wild card round at home where you've been dominant for basically two seasons. Someone explain to me where Mike, bringing back Mike McCarthy bring, gets you closer to a championship. I'll sit back. I wish I had coffee because I would just sip it right now. Well, Mike now. Tannenbaum is a professor now. He does teach a law class at Columbia. So go ahead. You raised your hand politely. Yeah. Explain it to him. Look, for 11 months of the year, we sit here and we praise and we should organizations like the Pittsburgh Steelers about being st- Oh, we're oh, we going to get into them oh, too. Oh, yeah, we okay. are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So go ahead. Jerry Jones taking the long view about a coach who's done great things in the regular season, 36 wins, and got a quarterback to play better than he ever has, Mm -hmm. who could have been the MVP of the entire league. Now, all of a sudden, for two weeks, we want to be emotional and reactionary. That's not how to build a long-term, stable program. And when you look at guys like Mike Tomlin and Sean Payton, they have as many championships as Mike McCarthy. And here's something else, guys. If the five of us were running ESPN bet, and we had to set the odds the over-under for wins for the next three years, Greeny, and it was 36. Those would be unbelievably high odds. Right. Point being is Mm -hmm. the replacement, there is no sure thing it's going to be better. I understand that. Graziano's going to give us a list in a minute that everyone needs to hear, but I understand that. The point is those of us who are on the other side of your argument are not saying Mike McCarthy is a bad football coach or that he's done a bad job, but that every once in a while you say to yourself, we've gotten from point A to point B. But if our goal is to get to point C, this guy has not demonstrated that he is able to get us there. Maybe someone else, particularly in a year in which someone like Bill Belichick is available, it would be, I think, a breach of your fiduciary responsibility not to at least sub, you know, kick that tire when no one is looking. So, Green, both things could be true. You could keep Mike McCarthy and say it has to get better. His clock management is atrocious. It is unacceptable. I would say to him, mm-hmm. how are we going to – give me that back. <laughs> how, are we, how are we going to change that? And, 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 and that's why it's really important to – got to bifurcate this. Didn't you can we do that by McCarthy, and you can still look but for improvement. Those didn't, are not didn't, they do that, didn't they do that last year? And the year before. Yeah, they did that last year. That's yeah. the problem. See, we keep bringing up the, the, the word time. 
Jerry Jones is walking the green mile. He ain't got a lot of time oh, left. Boy. Like, I'm not trying oh, to kill Jerry man. Jones. Now, don't listen, kill Jerry, Jerry, Jerry no, Jones. <laughs> remember, I got, I got to the Ravens right after Art Modell pushed all his chips to the middle of the table because he knew he didn't have much time left, and he knew it was time to win. It's time for Jerry Jones to go, Jerry, I don't like this new patient calm, let's listen to reason Jerry. We need him to be all in. You talk about Mike McCarthy and the fact that he has a Super Bowl ring. The, the, that's great. It's not with the Dallas Cowboys. So he doesn't have any equity there. Right. At this point, you're talking about he has a championship program, but he doesn't have a championship culture. And that's always been the problem in Dallas. When they get punched in the face, and I said it here a couple of weeks ago, they're front runners. And front runners is about yeah, personnel and it's about, it's about identity. They don't have one. And what happens is they're built to play from the lead. But the playoffs ain't about that. They remind me of like the Phoenix Suns. They're always going to dominate and win when they go against teams that they're better than. But when they go against teams that have somebody on the other sideline that can beat them, they can't they don't match have up. Listen, it should not take them that long to realize that, hey, they're playing a bunch of man beaters on us and they're crossing routes and we're going to have to com- communicate. It, doesn't, it shouldn't take to half time. You should be able to make those adjustments. That's what real good coaches do. And in the playoffs, we've been a part of that. Remember, we went out, we knocked off Phillip Rivers. We knocked off Tom Brady. We knocked off Peyton Manning because our coach can make in-game adjustments. Right. They don't have enough guys that can do that. So it's a culture thing. They got to cultivate that or Jerry Jones ain't going to get what he wants. Bro, he's got to get in here. It's and not, and that's fa- like, it's if you not a make culture a thing. Like, it's a player standpoint. You don't have linebackers. That makes him uh, unable to win us playoffs. It's too game. comfortable. That, then fine. Then you either need to address that with him and, and guarantee that he'll work on changing it, or you need to find somebody who can. But that second part's tricky. You know how many, you know how many coaches in the history of the league have won more postseason games than Mike McCarthy? Yeah, but we're not we're not nine. Okay, so he's got eleven career postseason wins. But that is more. That list. is more than Bill Walsh. It's more than Jimmy Johnson. It's more than Sean Payton, Tony Dungy, Mike Shanahan. It's it's three more than Mike Tomlin. So my point is this, mm. wow. it's too small a sample size to make your judgment on. If you're Jerry Jones <coughs> and you want to say, I believe in this man and I think that he can make improve. We saw it during the year. They changed what they were doing on offense during the season, right? So he's willing to adjust. He hasn't shown the ability to do it in playoff games. And if you want to fire somebody based on that, uh, we need to bring in somebody that, we, that, yeah. that doesn't get out schemed by Kyle Shanahan but, and Matt LaFleur okay, every me- year. Fair. But it's also sure. fair to say, I'd rather go with the – 50-plus game sample yeah. size of this guy but, than the game sample size give, of this guy. I think that's a reasonable decision to make if you're Jerry Jones. Give me that record against teams above 500. That's what I want to know because anybody can, when you have more talent sure. than anybody, be able to win that way. They need to figure some things out, right? And they do. They do. Firing the offensive coach. He's probably going to lose his defensive coordinator. What has he showed you that I'm he can be sure able to nice. out-coach a, another good coach with another nice. good quarterback? Let me take you behind the curtains. When you're making these decisions, you're juxtaposing, here's what we have. Here's how we improve. To Dan's list, there's no guarantee. Look, maybe there were some indirect conversations, Greeny, with Bill Belichick's people, but besides that, who are you going to get that's going to come in? You could have tried. You could have made him a little bit nervous. You could put him on his heels by bringing in Jim Harbaugh, having a conversation. you got to have a conversation. Why do we have to give him the the, the vote of confidence so early? If you're going to come out and say you believe in a guy and then you back it up with your actions. How can you believe in him? I don't know, but he does. Okay, and, and I think that's and, – and they've been steadfast on this. But I think – I mean, I, I just think it's critical to remember. If you told Jerry Jones, hire this coach, whoever he is, and guarantees you you will win the Super Bowl yeah. next year, he would do it. The, the, okay, but I don't think that – Let me give D-Wood the word. Let me ask you this question. Yeah. yeah. You know, we talk about – you read that whole list. Would you agree – That's a good discussion. – this year, unlike – probably any year that we've seen in quite some time – the coaching, you know, the coaching pool yes. is about as deep as we've ever seen. Sure. Yeah. Okay, and this is, t- and I'm talking about coming off a loss, an embarrassing loss at home Seven against the youngest team in the yeah. National Football League, where you have been dominant all year, the most dominant home yes. team in the National Football League. I just need can, y'all still haven't answered Please this off. question for Please me. Off. Where, how have the Ca- Dallas Cowboys? How have they gotten closer right. to a championship coming the off court, of what we court, just saw? The quarterback, the, the, sta- the status quo. No, the quarterback's the, the, playing a lot better. He looks and, shook. And the quarterback. Well, he, looked, he had a glazed look on his eyes, okay. man. He's so, drunk so, like so, a, so let me ask you this. So let, me, let me say this: the quarterback has arguably had an MVP time. All right, that's the end of that one. So that discussion can continue to go on. We can continue to 
have these talks and everything else on this situation. But the reality is, is if you don't fix the linebackers, if you can't uh, get this running game going and stopping the run, we'll continue to have the same problems. It's not rocket science. It's the same thing. All right, good people. I appreciate y'all. Peace out.